Joining us now is Brian Lennon, who is a farmer from Goodland, and he is not only on the Kansas Wheat Commission, but also a member of U.S. Wheat Associates. And so, uh, Brian, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. All right, let's uh, talk about the, the, the big news that we're still learning more about, and that is uh, uh, Brazil. And so uh, uh, kind of give us uh, what you know and what, what the possibilities are of, of that market coming back. Yeah, so Brazil, uh, for a number of years now, has not met their WTO commitment. When they entered the WTO back in 1994, they had a commitment to uh, have a duty-free tariff rate rate quota of 750,000 metric tons of wheat from the U.S., among other things. They've never actually taken that, only a couple of years when Argentina was short on supply. And so just this morning, actually, they announced that uh, the Brazil's recommitted to taking 750,000 metric tons of U.S. wheat duty-free, and that's, that's big news for the Kansas wheat farmers and all wheat farmers in the U.S., of course, six classes of wheat, but really a lot of this directly has an impact for, for hard red, correct? That's right. Most of that wheat would be hard red winter wheat that's produced in the in the mid plain states, Kansas being, of course, one of the top producers of hard red winter wheat. So. All right. So so we have this. This, again, uh, it's not a huge amount, but again, it, it's kind of those building blocks with everything else we have going on. A market like Brazil coming back uh, it has to make you feel good. Oh, very good. I mean, that's that's another 750,000 metric tons a year that we we weren't moving. We haven't moved for years, 20 years. And, uh, you know, just like you say, those building blocks, I mean, if you consider China and the trade issues there, you know, up until two years ago, we were consistently exporting 1.6 million metric tons to China. The last year and a half, we've done about 160,000 which is almost nothing. And so it's important to get those markets back. And you start adding those up, that becomes enough wheat to, to pull our supply down and kind of cure the supply and demand issue with wheat that we have today. Other issues, uh, Australia and others having some weather concerns that uh, some of us in Kansas are starting to experience those as well. <laughs> well, it seems like we always have weather <laughs> issues in Kansas. But, uh, yeah, Australia, they're having a tough time with their crop, and that could open up some markets for us this year. They're a big competitor for us in the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. They're one of the largest producers of hard white wheat in the world. We've tried to get hard white wheat going in Kansas, but hard red winter and hard white in the world you know, compete pretty closely together that one can replace the other. And so if Australia is looking at a shorter wheat crop, that gives us an end. So. Sure. We're talking with Brian Lennon, who is a farmer from Goodland and is a member of the U.S. Wheat Associates. Let's take a quick break. Back with more in just a moment.